Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am greatly honoured to have the opportunity uh, to be with you and to share with you something of the experiences that I had spending 10 years of my life in government and working very, very closely along a man whom I think we do not celebrate often enough. A man who's an enigma who comes once in the lifetime of a continent and uh, that man is 93 years old today, is a very frail old man and I think not too very far from now we will awake one morning and he will no longer be there. I thought it opportune to use an occasion like this to pay tribute to the man who had the greatest influence in my life, Nelson Mandela, who taught me that no matter how dark it is, we can look beyond conflict and the destruction that it causes. Hence, I've said reconciliation or recrimination, and it probably needs a subtitle which says beyond conflict. Mandela on occasion said, if there are dreams about a beautiful South Africa, there are also roads that lead to their goal. Two of these roads could be named goodness and forgiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the words of a man who was incarcerated for 27 years in a 3 by 4 cell. Probably, if one is very healthy, one third of your life. And one would normally think that a person who suffered such inhumane treatment for a political ideal would come out of prison and would ask for recrimination, would say that I want now to punish those who've inflicted hurt and indignity upon me. But this is where this man is so unique because he breaks the paradigm of victims become aggressors. I was very, very fortunate to be present the day when Nelson Mandela was released. And I was there with the who's who of the international media. And when he went to a square in Cape Town to deliver his first speech as a free man after 27 years, I promise you that white South Africa held its heart and said, now he will come and reclaim his dignity. Now he will vent his anger. And when that man got on a podium and said, never, never, never again in the history of this country will one man be allowed to discriminate against another on the basis of race, color, creed, religion, belief. The whole of white South Africa was speechless. Their expectation had been violated. And all of a sudden, one man, one man with a solid belief, took the heart out of conflict and anger and taught people that we can live together in love and in kindness for each other. If we look at the word goodness, there are a few things that I would like to share with you and I'm going to put them all up there. Optimism, courage, humility, empathy and respect. We often ask, how do we get beyond where the world currently is? The world currently is a very, very sad place. We've come through the whole Libyan crisis. And we notice that what very often happens is after revolutions, the situation is not necessarily better. It's sometimes even worse, unfortunately. The dreams don't always pan out. We've seen the Syrian violence. And we've seen the terrible consequences of this. And once again, 
we see the same situation unfold that was in Rwanda when millions of people died. The world is a talk shop. It doesn't do anything. Nelson Mandela, on the other hand, was willing to be a minority of one because he was optimistic. He believed, despite 27 years of incarceration, he saw, like a Viktor Frankl, the meaning of suffering and misery. And he believed that one day he would leave a three-by-four cell and he would sail across the waters to the mainland of South Africa and to the borders of South Africa and to the world and would turn this pariah state into an example of how people can live together and harvest the tremendous wealth of their diversity. He was a man who had unbelievable courage. I know because I saw the inside workings of what happened. He was offered freedom on numerous occasions, many, many years before he was released, on condition that you will rescind your political beliefs, you will go back to where you should live, and then you will live there quietly. And every time he uttered these profound words, only free men can negotiate. Only free men can negotiate. He held to that steadfastly. He had the courage. When he came out of prison, his organization was still absolutely motivated for an armed struggle. And he said, no. The road to the future is not a road of recrimination. It is a road of reconciliation. Now we need to heal the wounds of the past. Now we need to build the bridges to span the divides that have deliberately been created by one of the most repugnant ideologies ever. He was a man who had empathy. In natural reaction, he should have rejected the Afrikaner, and yet he embraced them. He said, I can understand their fear. I can understand their reluctance. But it is only by showing my love for them that I will draw them towards me. Those of you who had the privilege of seeing Invictus will know the wisdom of this old man who was a man who did not seek honor and recognition but who sought to bestow it on others, had tremendous empathy. He had respect for everyone, everyone. There was a wonderful occasion where he took one of the most rightest leaders after he'd become president and he invited him to his office. And the media waited in anticipation afterwards to see how he would lecture this guy on the future of this country. And as they came out, he put his arm around him and he said to the media, this is my fellow South African. And a man stood next to him who had said, never ever would there be a black man to lead this country. The blood would flow. The bodies would pile up. And the man stood there proudly. He said, because... He is my fellow South African. But Mandela also had humor, which is a great quality of creative people. And on that occasion, the media all piled on top of each other and people had step ladders so that they could good get shots, good photographs. And one guy fell in the fish pond. And his fellow journalists broke out laughing. Ha, 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 you bloody idiot. And he lay in the fish pond with his Hasselblad camera, which costs quite a few bucks. And an old man with a sore back came down the stairs. And everybody went quiet. And he put his hand out. And he helped the man out of the fish pond. And he picked up his camera. And he said, I'm so sorry, sir. And the media silently disappeared. 
the man Nelson Mandela goodness. Forgiveness. He had kindness. He had generosity. Uh, and his kindness didn't only happen in public fora. It happened in the ordinary day-to-day -day life. If we would do a trip for Nelson Mandela and everybody would stand at the bottom of the stairs so that the dignitaries could leave, there was not this thing of ignoring these ordinary people. He would come to every one of them and he would know them by name and he would thank them individually. It is this man's kindness and generosity that today is increasingly written in the DNA of South Africa. Do not take note of the 10% fringe element that you also have in your society. Nobody will change those people. They will always be with us. But if you look at the majority, something has happened to them. Something dramatic has happened to them. And this old man, that is why he was given the Nobel Peace Prize. This is probably one of the most worthy recipients ever of the Nobel Peace Prize. He showed respect. He wrote a moral code. We always say that leaders should be role models, role models for those who follow. We live in a world where we are facing the greatest leadership drought ever. This man came and taught us what leadership is, how we transcend violence and hatred to come to reconciliation. On my last slide, I have put Nelson up there because it's a face, I think, that we never will forget. If you want to make peace with your enemy, you have to work with your enemy. Then he becomes your partner. Now, this quotation, I think, is originally ascribed to Moshe Dayan after the Six-Day War, the man with a patch over his eye. But as it happens with quotations, they often tend to be claimed by many different people. Uh, the Clintons seem to have claimed it as well on occasion. Uh, I want to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm always inspired by the following quotation. And when my friend Hermann von Abruck and I sat down to write the book Beyonders, at the end of it all, we could utter a quotation from George Bernard Shaw who said he was a grumpy old Irishman but he wrote great things who said you see things that are and ask why I dream things that never were and ask why not may we become wires and not why notters I thank you very very sincerely for the wonderful opportunity to share a few moments with you on the life of a wonderful human being. Thank you very much.